face it, we all want to live a healthy and long life, but being healthy can be a challenge, right? Especially if you're uninformed. Yes. That's why today we're making sure you have the information you need about colon health. This is What's Up Doc? <laughs> Good to have Pfizer's senior medical advisor and our girl, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, yes. back with us. Yes. Yes. Are you ready to dive in? I'm always ready. Okay, okay, what exactly is colorectal cancer? Okay, so as most of you know, cancer is a disease that's caused by the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells. Yes. Colorectal cancer is a cancer that starts in the colon or the rectum. Yeah. Now, where's the colon and the rectum? First of all, the colon has a couple of other names, the large bowel or the large intestine. Mm. And the colon and the rectum are a part of the body's digestive system or tract. Yeah. The digestive system or tract is the part of our body, it's like a group of organs that helps us eat food and then change that food into energy or fuel for the rest of our body. Yes. Mm. Okay. Well, how common is colorectal cancer? So unfortunately, colorectal cancer is really quite common. Wow. About one in 24 people in the United States, so think about that for a second, one in 24 people in the United States will be diagnosed with colorectal cancer at some time in their lifetime. Oh, wow. And it's estimated that over one million people in the United States are living with colorectal cancer currently. Wow. wow. Okay. So it is. It's also the second most deadly cancer in the U.S., mm. resulting in over 50,000 deaths in 2019 alone. Oh. Wow. So it's common and it's deadly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the prognosis is often not good, especially if it's diagnosed at a late stage or it's the result of a specific genetic mutation. Oh. Do doctors know the cause of colorectal cancer? So unfortunately, we don't know the cause of colorectal cancer. Mm. Now, um, there are some inherited uh, genetic mutations that may cause this disease. Wow. And so it's important that genetic testing might be able to help with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's also thought that most colorectal cancer is the result of overgrowth of tissue, like a polyp, mm. that grows on the inside wall of the colon. Got it. Now, polyps are common. Um, some of them grow into cancer and some of them do not. And that's why it's important to know what type of polyp it is so you know the risk of cancer. Mm -hmm. okay. now, doctor, what are some signs and symptoms that you may have colorectal cancer? So now, this is a tricky part of colorectal cancer okay. because in most cases there are no symptoms oh, wow. until the disease is advanced. Oh. And that is why it is so very important to have screening regularly, especially for people who are at risk. Yes. Okay? So there are some things to look out for. So yes. let me just say that. Let us now, know. these are not specific to colorectal cancer. So if you have one, don't panic. You don't sure. panic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they're not specific to colorectal cancer, but they are things that you should look out for. Okay. So some of the symptoms include changes in your bowel movement, um, blood in your stool. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, I know. Stomach pains, aches, or cramps that just don't go away. Weakness and fatigue, mm. and also unintended or unexplained weight loss. Oh, wow. So who exactly is at risk? So let me divide the risks into two, two pieces. Okay. One are risks that you can't control. Yeah. The other are risks that you might have some control over. Okay. Okay. okay? So the ones that you can't control first, okay. age. Okay. So, yeah, no, I wish mm -hmm. I could control it, but I can't. <laughs> So the risk of colorectal cancer increases as you get older. It's most common in people over the age of 50. Now, younger people can get it. That's important to know. In fact, there's some interesting data. In the United States, colorectal cancer has continued to increase in the past decade for people under the age of 50. And younger adults present with more advanced disease. So age matters. Okay. History matters. Uh, personal history, like having an inflammatory bowel disease, increases your risk. Personal history or family history of colorectal polyps or colorectal cancer increases your risk. So history matters. So lastly, your racial or ethnic background, specifically if you're African American, your risk of developing colorectal cancer is higher than non-Hispanic whites in the United States. 
So the incidence of colorectal cancer is approximately 20% higher mm. in African Americans than in whites. Wow. Okay, so those are some of the things that you don't have control over. Right. Mm -hmm. Some things that may contribute to the development of colorectal cancer that you do have, you know, some control mm -hmm. over is consuming a diet that's filled with a lot of red or processed meats. Mm -hmm. Being overweight, smoking, excessive drinking, and having a lack of physical activity or a lifestyle that's kind of sedentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when should people get screened and what are the different types of ways, um, methods to get screened? I'm so glad you asked that because screening is so very important because yeah. I said, you know, there are not a lot of symptoms and all of this, so yeah, you really yeah. need to be on top of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most guidelines from most organizations suggest that screening start at the age of 50. Mm -hmm. So you want to start your screening at 50 unless you have some of those risk factors that we name. Um, such as having a family history or being African American, then you may want to start screening earlier, like at the age 45. Okay. Now, the most comprehensive screening method is a colonoscopy. Oh. Yeah, I know. Everybody's brown and ill. Uh. Yeah, I know. Now, what happens in a colonoscopy? The doctor takes a camera and starts at the rectum and looks all through your entire colon to look for signs of cancer and polyps. Mm. Now, this is really important because during the colonoscopy, if, po if polyps are found or other tissue, then it could actually be removed during so that great. procedure. That's okay. so great. But a lot of people are like, well, am I going to be awake? Mm -hmm. So um, there are actually ranges for sedation from no yeah. sedation to general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. People are also like, well, what about that prep? I, don't uh -huh. know, I was waiting for you to say that. Yes. <laughs> so what about that prep? Yeah. Well, prep may be inconvenient, but it's so very important because the prep um, makes sure that the doctor can get a clear view yeah. because uh -huh. the colon is cleaned out. Right. So, you know, if you think about it, this is a really important part of it. We can make it happen. Right. Prep or your life. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to prep. So it's especially okay to yeah. prep. So another option is stool paste tests. These are ones that often happen at home, right? Uh -huh. So you give a stool sample okay. um, and it goes away to get analyzed. So these can often happen at home. So they're less invasive, less inconvenient. However, you really can't see the polyps mm -hmm. and sometimes they um, miss some of the specific uh, cancers. Got it. So um, if you have an abnormal test, then you would probably go on to have a colonoscopy afterwards. Okay. So, again, I understand that some people are put off by the inconvenience and it just sounds a little, I don't know, yucky. That's a medical mm -hmm. word, I guess. <laughs> but I can't emphasize enough that it is really a small price to pay, uh, given that it could potentially save your life. Exactly. Yes. So, like most other cancers, uh, with colorectal cancer, early detection gives you the best chance for successful treatment. Okay. So great. Thank you so much, Dr. Frieda. Thank you. So wide. We always love when you stop by and chat with us. Make sure you all visit Dr. Frieda's website, gethealthystayhealthy.com. It's a great resource. And for more information, please head on over to therealdotcom 